Lulo. Lulo is a fruit that I have talked about in the past. Uh, I'm not going to really go too deeply into this because I've talked about it more than once. However, it is time to make ketchup out of it. Um, this is something that should be pretty interesting because Lulos are related to tomatoes, so I'm guessing there's going to be some similarity between Lulo ketchup and regular ketchup. I just don't know exactly what that is going to be because Lulos do have a slight similarity to tomatoes, but not much of one. The flavor of a Lulo is very sour. It's very uh, fruity. It's got like a little bit of a uh, like an orange rind kind of appeal. I, I relate these to being kind of like ecto cooler. So how is that going to translate to ketchup? I don't know. Let's find out. My cat is uh, going to be joining me apparently. <laughs> My Lulos are not really in the best sort of condition. I am very lucky to have a source for Luke Lulos here in New York City. However, um, sometimes they don't look so great. So hopefully the what it looks like on the outside isn't going to really mean much for what it looks like on the inside. Because uh, I don't want to use the outside. I'm going to actually scoop out the, the centers of this. This one doesn't seem to have made it. So I'm going to get rid of this one Lulo. But the rest of them look okay. Okay, so here are the ingredients. We've got half a cup of lulo pulp. We have half of a small onion. Small! Two tablespoons of brown sugar. In here is one half teaspoon of salt, one bay leaf, one allspice berry, a pinch of cinnamon, a pinch of celery seed, and uh, a pinch of cayenne, and probably a few other things. And finally, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. In this small pan, I just have a touch of olive oil in there. I'm gonna throw in the onion. All right, the onions are not entirely translucent, but getting close. So I'm gonna take the salt and spices and put that in there just so they can wake up a little bit. The lulo, the brown sugar, and the vinegar. Just incorporate all of this together. Now this is going to cook for 30 minutes. And along the way, I will add water if it ends up getting too thick. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to get that thick because Lulo is very juicy. And, uh, yeah, we'll check back in about 30 minutes. It's an... <coughs> oh, that's pungent. <coughs> oh, man, that's strong. Yeah, there's like a gas cloud in this, uh, in this kitchen right now. So, it's important that <coughs> during this 30 minutes as I'm doing right now, it's important to stir it. Part of the reason why making ketchup kind of sucks is that this does take a lot of uh, <coughs> attention to do. Some people prefer to do this in like a slow cooker. <coughs> oh. Or, um, what do you call it, a crock pot or something? You can do it that way uh, and then you do it like overnight but uh, I don't have patience for that. I want ketchup right now. I want Lulo ketchup right now. Well, 30 minutes and it reduced down to almost nothing. But um, I'm not done with it. We're going to reduce it m even more. And how I'm going to do that is by... Well, first got to fish out that, uh, that bay leaf. There it is. And we're going to get rid of that. I also threw a little bit of water in there just to um, help it mix up. And I'm going to take my immersion blender and blend it. It's such a small amount, but um, this will actually help make more of it 
just because it's going to blend up any of the, the pulpy bits. Using a rubber spatula, I'm going to press the ketchup through the strainer. That way we can get rid of all of the uh, seeds and pulpy bits from it. This is the time to taste test it just to see if it needs any sugar, salt, vinegar, etc. So let me give it a quick taste. Oh, that is, that is powerful. That is plenty sweet and plenty salty. If anything, I would take some out if I could. So I'm going to leave this as it is and just put this in the fridge so it can uh, mellow out and get nice and cool. It has been two days and my Lulo ketchup is done. It is uh, pretty thick too. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm gonna give it just a taste on its own. Holy. Ooh. That is strong. That is strong stuff. It's good though. That's really tasty. It tastes like ketchup, but it's fruitier, it's more sour, it's more powerful. <laughs> it's a crazy cat. Uh, one thing with it is I think this needs less salt. This is very salty. Um, maybe like on french fries or something would be fine. You just wouldn't want to put salt on those french fries. And uh, that is totally my doing. I think I put too much salt in it. But uh, on its own, despite of that, really, really good. The extra pop that this has from that, um, that sourness is actually really nice. So I think that this would be totally suitable to be used for um, any kind of ketchup application. Put french fries in this, put it on a burger or something. Um, it tastes like ketchup, just very, very powerful and tart ketchup. So, um, yeah, that's good. And there is like a little bit of maybe like a, I don't know, like a citrus sort of, sort of element to it. Not exactly, but something kind of like that. So I would actually try this on something. I've got one of these hash brown things here. Put some of that Lulo ketchup on it. Let's give this a try. That's good. This has a very similar appeal to ketchup but it also has its own unique thing going on. So I would highly recommend it. If you want to try making ketchup and you want to like mess around a little bit, Lulo totally works. Finding fresh Lulo can be kind of difficult, but I think this would work perfectly well with frozen Lulo. It's not the easiest thing to find, but it's something that I found at supermarkets. You can find it like at major supermarkets sometimes. Uh, you definitely can find it at any Latin American supermarket. So uh, if you have one of those, check it out, keep an eye open for it, and um, make ketchup out of it, make juice out of it. Lulo's really good, and uh, this is definitely a good way to use it. Okay, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.